Remarks by Elder James Ferguson Brethren and sisters, whatever else it may be to me and to my feelings, it is a pleasure to have an opportunity of bearing testimony to the truth, and it is a particular pleasure to me to see my brethren, who are growing, who are the growing hopes of Israel, so full of life and animation, and also to hear them tell their feelings. For experience has taught me this truth, that the boys who have been born of Mormon parents are the ones to accomplish the great work of the last days, for they have the root of it in them. They have sucked the true spirit of Mormonism from their mothers, and when they go forth, they have more of the power of the spirit with them than any other men. This has troubled some of the old veterans in Mormonism in England. They realize that the affections of the people are drawn towards the boys. This never hurt me, for my mind was drawn to them, and I know that it is the principle of attraction that belongs to the holy priesthood. And where the most of it exists, there will be the most attractive power, and it will draw all other powers towards it. As Jesus said himself, When I am lifted up on high, I will draw all men unto me. It is so with the president of this church. He has power to draw all good, honest-hearted men to him. And it is so with these young Mormon boys. Whether they go among Jews or Gentiles, they will draw more of the honest to hear and obey their words than any other elders that go abroad to preach the gospel. My testimony with regard to Mormonism is that it is the truth of heaven and no fable. For men to say that they have tried it one winter and summer, and that they have proven that it is not the truth, thereby attributing the lack of power which they had experienced to its non-existence, is sheer ignorance. I know and have learned mankind, probably as well as they have, and I know that there is no man who has sincerely tried Mormonism, but who knows as I do, that it is the truth of God. I could challenge the whole world to find an honest-hearted man who has always done his duty, consecrated his property, and who has laid himself, his wives, and his children upon the altar, to find one who will say that he does not know this to be the church of Jesus Christ, for no one who has done these things will say that he has not felt the power of God and the light of heaven shining upon his mind and filling his soul with joy. It is the errors, the sin of men, that prevent the light of heaven from continuing to shine upon their souls. They think the counsels of the presidency are not as good as their own. When they get into darkness and sin, and they gradually grow worse until the light of eternity is shut out from their minds by the power of the adversary, who has gained the ascendancy over them. And there are cases of this kind in this city. They have gone on from disobedience to counsel to open transgression, from trivial transgressions to gross iniquities, and now they are enveloped in a black cloud of darkness. If the light of the Spirit ever descends upon them, it is only as the shining of the sun in the midst of a severe storm, glancing through the clouds to show the more vividly their own blackness. So long as God will give me strength to obey the servants of God, have I any substance that I would not give into their care and charge? No, I feel that myself and my all on the altar. The Lord has fitted out the ship of Zion and appointed her officers. The master is well versed in navigation, knows how to take the reckoning, how to carry sail and how to guide the ship. If we have anything in our skiff that we want to save, now is the time, before the storm comes, to place it on board the big ship. Let us all consecrate our property and our affections with it, that where our treasures are, our hearts may be also. No man nor woman has placed their treasures in the kingdom of God without that act giving them more comfort to their hearts than any other thing they have done. May God bless you and enable you to be faithful in all things committed to your charge, and eventually that we may be saved and exalted in his celestial kingdom is my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.